As always, we thank you for watching Sunday Morning, but it's what you watch the rest of the time that's on the mind of Reed Hastings. Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes chats with the man behind Netflix. The New York Times once described the Netflix lobby as the hottest C and B seen spot in Hollywood. That was last year. This is now. It's supposed to be full of people cheering and talking, and now it's empty. Reed Hastings, the co-founder and co-CEO of Netflix, showed us the video wall promoting new Netflix shows, surrounded by lots and lots of empty chairs. We will be back. We're going to get that vaccine, and then that <laughs> lobby's going to be pumping again. I know why you're so optimistic. I know why, because like toilet paper and Lysol, you're one of the few companies who has really thrived in this pandemic. People love entertainment, whether that's uh, wartime, peacetime, COVID. Yeah, but you're avoiding my question, which is that you're doing extremely well. Your subscription numbers have what? We are off to a faster start in growth than any year in our history roughly from 160 million to 190 million, so a lot of growth. Internationally, too. All around the world, COVID, unfortunately, yeah. is everywhere, and uh, luckily, Netflix is, too. The global growth of Netflix has been exponential over the last few years. Now the service is available in 190 countries, and its financial growth has been a wow also. When the company went public in 2002, the stock price was $15 a share. During the pandemic, Netflix has been trading around $500. If you spend chasing a big audience, you better get one. Hastings oh. co-CEO Ted Sarandos joined us up on the roof, socially distant. You created this monster. <laughs> you did. Binge watching is so addictive. It's changed yeah. our habits. It's changed our sleeping habits. We don't read as just much. Just one more, just one more. We don't watch yeah. CBS as much. <laughs> People say it's ruined their sex lives. <laughs> well, they're really? watching the wrong thing then. <laughs> <laughs> I did a story on Netflix 2006. An age ago. An age ago. OK, all DVD. All DVD, you had those little red envelopes flying around the we country. We still have them, we still have them. One of the things you told us, you realized that you were not CEO material. You said that you were not a good CEO and uh, you needed to turn that over to somebody else. I definitely struggled as CEO. Are you CEO material now? Beginning to be, trying to be, <laughs> aspiring <laughs> to be. But do you think it's kind of humorous? that a guy who says he wasn't a good CEO has written a book <laughs> about how to manage a company. The book is called No Rules Rules, and it spells out a highly unorthodox management style that gives Netflix employees an unusual amount of freedom and responsibility, offering unlimited vacation time and paying top-of-the-market salaries. But in exchange... What's the keeper test, though? And I say that, though, because everything isn't sunny and wonderful here. I mean, it's tough. We run like a professional sports team. We're trying to get the best players on the field at all times. If someone was leaving to go to another company, would we work really hard to keep them at Netflix? And if so, then they pass the keeper test. And if not, we give them a very generous severance package and we let them go. Well, sometimes they don't want to go but the keeper test says it's not worth keeping them. And therefore, you have a reputation, this company, of being ruthless. Some people call it the Hunger Games company. They just want a good show, that's all they want. There's 24 of us, Gail, only one comes out. It's not like the Hunger Games at all. This is a total cooperation. But if you're gonna win the World Cup of Entertainment, then you gotta have the best players on the field at all times. There's no question it's a tough place. There's no question it's not for everyone. In the tough Netflix way, honesty is the best policy no matter what. You say that you instituted this idea of radical candor because of marriage counseling that you went through. Well, it's a long time ago. <laughs> now we've been married uh, 29 years. But early in our marriage, we had this great marriage counselor, and he got me to see that I was just lying a lot. I was saying conventional things like family's the most important thing. And then I would stay at work late. 
you know, and so it, it helped so much for him to really show me that I wasn't being that honest and, you know, it helped to live more in balance. What are live 360s? And the live 360 is we'll typically have a dinner or a lunch and then everybody just goes around and gives each other feedback how they could be more effective professionally. So do you get feedback or criticism? You? All the time being too glib and not really listening, or I'll get critiqued about being too positive and Pollyanna-ish and not really seeing the problems, or lots of things. And, you know, there's always grains of truth. In his book, Hastings reports on what was said about him in one of those sessions. This one said that you're too aggressive, you're overconfident, and you're too dismissive when other people have ideas. Does that, you recognize yourself? Yes, and I, again, I try to mitigate it, and then, you know, it, you're, you can't really change your nature. Ted Sarandos joined Netflix over 20 years ago. He says Hastings' vision is what sold him on the company. Reed described Netflix in 1999 almost exactly like it is right now. And why that seems insane was at the time, the internet was so slow and so expensive that it just seemed incomprehensible that, I mean, if someone emailed you a video clip, it would take days for it to open up and watch. Uh, and Reed talked so crystal clear about where this was heading. And I was just mind blown. I don't, by the way, I don't, I'm not sure that I thought he was right, but I, he, his sense of clarity about it was just incredible. Netflix, all the DVDs you want. Hastings guided Netflix through four major shifts from renting DVDs to streaming other people's shows to producing its own shows, to going global. This year, Netflix got more Oscar and Emmy nominations than any other studio, and that's in large part thanks to Sarandos. My job was to pick everything that's on Netflix. He picked nearly 400 shows last year, and every one of them, be it The Crown, or its royal cousin, Tiger King. You're gonna have to kill me to shut me up. Started with a pitch. We probably hear about 100 a day. You have 100 pitches a day. Yeah, so that's film and series and television and global and documentaries. The first pitch Sarandos heard and the first show Netflix produced itself in 2013 was House of Cards. Tell us why you even wanted House of Cards. What did you see there? It was Shakespearean. It was about greed and power and sex and all the makings of all of great television. Is this your subtle way of saying that I'm out of shape? No, it's my way of suggesting you could be in better shape. That sounds both passive aggressive and condescending. Just plain aggressive and true. Don't wait up for me. House of Cards starred Kevin Spacey and Robert Wright. So what did you have to do to get them to sign on? Ted's charm and a huge checkbook. <laughs> that <go>. combination <laughs> can do anything. How huge a checkbook? Well, Sarandos paid $100 million for the first two seasons of House of Cards. Netflix is notorious for buying its way to the top. We're spending billions of dollars and making every show in the world. Did you ever see the Saturday Night Live skit where you're just throwing money out there <laughs> and you're buying anything? This show is about a girl named Ginny. Yes, here's money. Go, make it, make it. South Park did one too, they were there. it would be answering the phone saying, Netflix, you're greenlit. Who am I speaking with? <laughs> and that's you. That's I'm South assuming, Park. they didn't call me by name, but I'm assuming. He has an enormous content budget. He spent $15 billion on programming last year. Yeah, but across the world, it's not so much. Well, but you're paying some stars $30 million, $40 million. Yeah. Whoa, uh, you know, the pressure on the other studios to match what you've done, it's been intense. How much is Will Smith getting these days? Oh, 40 million, 50 million? I can't tell you what Will Smith pays. <laughs> Variety reported that Netflix will likely pay Will Smith $35 million to star in the sequel to the Netflix film Bright. This summer, Netflix moved $100 million of its assets into black owned banks, and Hastings and his wife gave $120 million of their own money to historically black colleges and universities. Hastings, whose worth is estimated at $5 billion, has pledged to give away the majority of his wealth to worthy causes. So Ted is your chief in charge of content. 
and then you make him co-CEO. People are wondering whether this is your first step out the door. Well, eventually, but, um, you know, eventually we're all going to die. They're going to drag you out by your feet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs>